Hello and welcome to my latest new rack presentation. In this video I'm going to go over some of the new uh, features that have been added including amongst other things the feedback and the vocoder modules. Now I want to start this uh, video with something quite important really uh, which is a change since previous versions. Uh, in previous versions we've been able to send single MIDI notes to new rack to actually switch between the three racks. Now if you look in settings under remote there is now an option to turn that feature off and on and by default now it's off because uh, with the addition of the uh, instruments, uh, MIDI instruments, uh, we don't want this rack switching to happen just because you play a particular MIDI note. So it's up to you whether you turn this on or off. Now I want to turn our attention to automation and one thing you may have noticed that is if you're automating knobs or faders quite quickly as in this example um, that can be relatively CPU intensive if you've got a number of these going on throughout your rack. Now during the setup of an automation module it's quite important to see what effect the changes you're making are having on the destination effect or knob but you can turn on this little switch here on the left side of the interface to actually reduce the update speed of the knob. The automation will carry on at the same speed it always did. Uh, the only difference is the uh, knob or fader update is reduced to once every one or two seconds. So if you find that you're running with high uh, CPU usage, uh, turn this option on. Or it might be good practice just to turn it on once you've got all the automation set up and you're happy with uh, how it sounds. You can always turn this option off again if you want to make any adjustments. But generally as a CPU saver it's good practice to use this. Now before I draw your attention to the instruments and the vocoder, I just want to mention that um, as I've mentioned before in previous uh, videos, there's actually two versions of new rack. There's a standard version and a MIDI version. And you need to load the MIDI version in order to use any of the MIDI instruments, the vocoder or the talk box or the sidechain compressor. Now in this example I'm going to load the new uh, analog sawtooth synth and if I try and play a key on the keyboard you'll notice that we hear no sound because we need to enable MIDI in here. Um, we couldn't do that unless we loaded the MIDI version of New Rack. So let me just add a couple of effects to the end of this chain and you can hear kind of what it sounds like. Now this is again is not intended as a standalone instrument it's a sawtooth uh, analog synth generate to generate a carrier for the vocoder and talk box. That's really what these instruments are for. So let's take a look at the vocoder module in action and then I'll explain to you how it works. Um, here we're using the vocoder module with this new synth engine as a carrier source. <laughs> Now I could have equally stuck an, uh, a AUV3 instrument in that top slot and used that as a carrier source instead of the module, the synth module. But essentially you feed something into the vocoder. Now you'd still hear nothing when you play your MIDI instrument, your MIDI keyboard, because you need actually a control signal, usually a vocal, coming in on bus B. So it's important to enable uh, multi-inputs in the settings. Now because of my terrible singing voice I'm actually using a recorded sound as a as a vocal input. Let's have a listen. Some precious moments just a few but ever since I think of you. Now in order to feed that vocal from channel 2 into new rack you need to pick new rack from the multibus audio inputs and ensure that the um we're sending to bus 2. Um, you can change that within new rack, but essentially once that's done we're all set up. 
And although I didn't go through me adding these components to the rack, there is actually a rack called Synthfo code you can load to get this exact setup, so uh, check that out. Now another feature that's been uh, heavily requested is some way of actually uh, introducing feedback into a chain. And uh, we can now do that using the feedback module, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you're actually hearing there is an instrument passing through the preset called uh, Shimmer. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some feedback to this module and actually spice it up a little bit more. And the first thing you need to do is go into the other section and add a feedback module. Now when you do that you'll notice that there's a second output. And we need to feed the output back to the beginning of the uh, input chain. And so if we click on the input of the delay, the take delay, we can click on other and we can add a mixer module. And if you notice this as a second input. Now by default that second input the volume is turned down, so turn it all the way up. Now all that's left to do is wire this up, so we want to connect that mixer module to that secondary output on the feedback. So you need to head back to the mixer module and click on the input on the mixer module. You always do input first and it will start flashing. And then click on the output within the feedback module and as you see it will wire those up. So we now have a feedback loop ready and waiting. So let's turn the feedback dial up to around 80% and see what that sounds like. Now you might have to adjust the high pass filter uh, a little bit just to ensure that those low end frequencies don't get out of control. Now you should really be able to hear the difference when I disable that uh, feedback module now. Uh, it makes a massive difference. Now the one thing to be wary of is because the feedback's in your control, it's very easy to go overboard with this, so be careful. Okay, now to the last uh, topic, which is um, another request, which was the ability to add mute and power buttons. And the reasoning for this is that if you've got a number of modules here, they might all have individual power buttons, but what if you want to turn the whole rack off in one go? Well, you can now add either a mute uh, which allows you to obviously mute that whole signal chain. But the important thing to note is it must be placed right at the end of the chain after all other effects. Because uh, New Rack is a pull system, it pulls audio through from the out. Um, it needs to be placed in that position. Right, so that just about covers uh, this update. There are other things I haven't covered here, but uh, you'll probably be able to work them out for yourself. So until next time, thank you for watching.